gangs only usually deal with gang stuff, but sometimes there are straight bullets to hit innocent people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not having food, not having nowhere to live, not having family. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of guys join gangs, mm -hmm. because it's a family structure. Mm -hmm. So that's why you got gangs killing gangs. Because they really love the dudes that they fall under. There are prettier places here than in America. We had Donald Trump as a president. Mm -hmm. He called Africa a shithole. Mr. Trump was referring to African nations. So a lot of these people think Africa is a shithole. Africa is way, way better than America. Uh, I'm safer here than I am in America. Mm. Really? That's a fact. Can I borrow a thousand dollars? She gave it to me. Then you go to like, black girls ain't giving you in where get out my face. So I'm wow. like, man, like, these white girls, they don't stress us like y'all stress us and they don't put us down. Yeah. I'm like, this is crazy. Why don't black people have black people back like that? Wow. We're just a bunch of broke people who try to impress other broke people. So mm. we look good, but we broke. Then you get white people who look trashy, but they got a lot of money. Kids don't listen to their parents no more. They disrespect their parents like crazy. Now you got kids telling their parents what to do. That's why you see all these kids doing crazy stuff on TikTok. Well, a lot of us grew up in the projects. Mm -hmm. Think about it, the word project. We were their project. So, mm. and they tell white people, you can't live near them. And then they infiltrated our neighborhoods with drugs. And then you have little boys seeing their mom struggle. Initially, they start selling drugs to try to help mom pay the bills because there's no dad there. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get out of it. And then mm -hmm. they just started locking all the black folks up. They gave you $50 and they say, good luck, we'll see you in a year. Mm -hmm. Like people who go to prison, about 80 to 90% are back within a year. Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing, amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode. As you guys already know, we interview diasporans uh, who are currently living here on the continent who moved from the diaspora. And uh, today we do have here someone very special. He goes by the name Jesunas. He is an American footballer. Uh, decided to leave America behind and currently living here in Ghana. So we do have him on the show to have a dialogue on why he decided to move to the continent. So without further ado, Jesunas, welcome on the show. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. You're welcome. People are watching for the first time. They might not know who you are. Can you please briefly introduce it yourself to the people watching for the first time? Well, my name is uh, Jay Sonis. Uh, born in a small town in Enfield, North Carolina, but I grew up in Newport News, Virginia. You know, I played uh, a little professional football, uh, ran track in college, served a little in the United States Army. That's pretty much it. Where we are currently filming is called Gendu Place. Gendu Place is a co-working space located in East Legon, very close to American House. If you're moving from the diaspora, coming from the UK, US, you want somewhere to work with a high-speed internet and also electricity. They have a solar system for the electric, so it never goes out. And if you know anything about Ghana, we have Doomso, which is literally the electric grid going off and on. When you are working here, you, you don't go through that. So I think it's a good place for you to come check out, come work out. If you're coming, tell them you're coming from Web Nation Africa, you might get a discount. So yeah, uh, thank me later. So um, let's go back to your story a little bit. At what point did you decide to come to Africa? And what influenced that decision? Man, it was like during COVID. Like um, something just popped up. It was the God Box Tour. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. I didn't have a, a whole lot of money at that time because I kept moving. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was making payments in order to pay for like, it was like $4,000, but it included everything. And um, once I got here in July of 2021, I made my mind up that I had to move here. Mm. Before then, man, like before that COVID stuff happened, I didn't never think about moving to Africa. Yeah. Why didn't you ever think about that before that COVID? Probably the way... The education system is in America, like the stuff they show us mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. Like when you look on TV, Africa, you see skinny kids with big bellies, snot from the eyes, and flies flying around. Mm -hmm. So, me being stupid, you know, that's all that I knew. So you believed it? I believed it because mm -hmm. they like donate fifty cents or donate a dollar to help the kids in Africa. So I should try to donate. Come to find out, mm -hmm. kids won't get that money. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, so what was like your, your biggest culture shock when you realized all oh, this is not true? When uh, you got here for the first well, time? Well, man, I, I had an idea it wasn't true because America, like, they lie about everything. Mm. They, they literally lie about everything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, once, once I got here, I was like, I can't believe it looks like this. Mm. Like, so I had to tell everybody about it because mm. people in America, they still think that people live in huts. I mean, some really? people do in parts of Africa mm -hmm. because they want to, not because mm -hmm. they have to, mm -hmm. you know, but they just think, oh, Africa is poor and it's a lot of crime. 
Like, mm. bro, I'm safer here than I am in America. Mm. Really? That's a fact. Wow. Well, wait, wait, in America, how did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Newport News, Virginia. It was, it was bad because I grew up in the projects. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of drugs, uh, killings, mm. uh, robberies, and stuff like that. But my mom, she's... <laughs> She was super strict. I had to come in the house before the street lights come on. Because, mm. you know, down south, mm-hmm. we, we grew up. It was sundown towns, which means you had to be in the house before the, the you know, it got dark because mm-hmm. white people, they kidnap people, they burn them, hang them, and stuff like that. So, generation, 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 our parents always made us come in the house before the street lights came on. Mm. It's all conditioning, man. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Wow. So let, let's go a little bit deep into that. You said your your mom, it was gang banging, was shooting and stuff like that. Let's yeah. talk about it. What, well, how was it like as a child growing up in that? Well, it, it was. I wasn't scared mm-hmm. because, like, you know, gangs only usually deal with gang stuff, but sometimes there are straight bullets to hit innocent people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for the most part, I knew. Most of the people in the neighborhood, and they knew I played sports, and I wasn't into that stuff. So, mm. dad was told me, Jay Sonis, don't do what we're doing. Go to school, get your education. Because mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times, man, people don't want to do that stuff. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, it's all they can do. What do you mean by that? Elaborate on that. Because, uh, see, a lot of people, like, o- over here in, in, in Africa, they don't know about a lot of history in America. Mm-hmm. So, up until, like, the 1970s, mm-hmm. Black people had a mom and dad in the household, mm-hmm. and you can survive off the dad's salary, mm-hmm. and the mom just re- took care of the kids in, in the house. Mm-hmm. So they took all the factory jobs out the neighborhoods, and then they infiltrated our neighborhoods with drugs. Mm. So that locked up a lot of the dads, some of the moms, and then you have little boys send their mom struggle, and then you got maybe one of his friends like, hey, you can make some money doing this. Mm-hmm. So the, initially, they started selling drugs to try to help mom pay the bills because there's no dad there. Mm-hmm. And it just became a revolving door because that money come fast, mm. especially the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Like, ain't no money in drugs now. But, you know, back then, they was making a ton of money. So it just became a revolving door. And people, they couldn't get out of it. And then mm. they just started locking all the black folks up. Mm. Yeah. But you, didn't, you never got yourself involved in that. No, I, I never got involved because in Because of drugs. your mom upbringing? Well, because my, well... People in my family was on drugs, so I didn't. I, I saw what it did to them. Mm. And plus, I was scared. Mm. Like you said, well, you said that again. You said people in your family were on drugs. People in my family still on drugs. Oh, really? Yeah. You can find any black person in America. Somebody in their family on drugs. Mm. Yeah. Is it that it's, bad? It's bad. Like it, it's a lot of us. Not all of us, but a lot of us grew up in the projects, mm-hmm. which is like they call it the ghetto. Mm-hmm. But think about it. The word project. We were there. Project. So mm. they put us in these areas, what they call red areas, mm-hmm. lead, paint, um, bad water. The air is horrible, a lot of crime. And they tell white people, you can't live near them because if you live near them, near them you don't get home loans and we're not going to fund <laughs> like your neighborhood, like um, education and, um, you know, extracurricular activities. So mm. we, we lived in all the red areas and mm-hmm. it just from generation to generation to generation, it was, it's hard to get out of. Mm-hmm. You know, because as a whole, black folks, we're probably the poorest group in America, even though we spend the most money. Mm-hmm. Makes no sense, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But why do you think that is, that we are very poor by we spend the most money? Because we're just a bunch of broke people who try to impress other broke people. Mm-hmm. So we look good, but we broke. Then you get white people who look trashy, but they got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Like, for real, I got white friends, like older guys in Wyoming, mm-hmm. but they got holes in their jeans, shoes, right, had their shoes, ten. I mean, they, they walk in their shoes so the soul come off. But they got like 800 credit scores. They got big old houses, boats, jet skis. Whenever they want something, they can get it. But then mm-hmm. us, we just want to look good. Mm, interesting. Want, it's crazy. We want the, the shoes, the belts, the cars. Like, people don't care about that stuff. When did you realize this dynamic? Well, I was like, I was like that growing up, man, because I ain't never had nothing, mm-hmm. you know? So I always saw that stuff. I just, I never wanted it. Mm-hmm. Because I felt like once you got it, people going to try to take it from you. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So at what age did you decide to leave the projects? Shoot. I didn't leave the projects. <laughs> I was like 15, 16. 15, 16. Yeah, because yes. my mom, we, moved, we finally moved into a house. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't far from the projects, but it was a little different because now we got more space. Like in the projects, bro, it's like 
people on top of people. Like, you can hear your neighbors next door when they're having sex. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because everybody's that close. Mm-hmm. Like, you probably can pass gas and hear a neighbor. But that's how close we mm-hmm. lived. So everybody knew, knew everybody. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. How was that like when you were in that environment? How, what did that do to your mindset? Well, back then, I thought it was normal because that's all I knew. Mm-hmm. From the time I moved from North Carolina when, when I was in the second grade, my sister was in the first, we went straight to the project. So that's all I knew. Mm. We, all, you know, we go outside, we play all day until uh, we had to come in the house. And we did that all summer until we went to school. And mm-hmm. then you get out of school, you play outside until mm. the streetlights come on. You go in the house. Mm. You know, people get shot, robbed. Like, we mind our business. Mm. Because if you don't mind your business, they, you know, mm-hmm. they coming for you. So you grew up in, in a, single ro- a single mom home? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what was your dad at that time? Uh, in North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How was he growing up with a single mom? I mean, what was she doing for doing for job and stuff like my that? My mom worked, like like I like I told uh, Della before. Like my, she struggled with drugs since the 1980s mm-hmm. because you know the whole crack epidemic. Like mm-hmm. her friend mm-hmm. got her to try it, and then like you get hooked on it. And you know, some people be like, "Why don't you just stop drugs? You can't." Like, drugs literally rewires your brain. Seriously. Mm. That's all they think about. And, um, and, and depending on the drug, like, my mom smoked crack. Crack ain't nothing but cocaine. Mm-hmm. We add baking soda and water to cook it up and you rock it up. So when you first strike it, that first hit mm-hmm. of crack, mm-hmm. it's the highs you get. So they, ch- they spend all their money chasing that first hit until they sober again. And then once they sober and they hit it again, that's the highs they're going to get all night. Mm. So that's how people who smoke crack, they spend a lot of money. So we struggled a lot from that because my mom always spent her money. She get paid Friday and Saturday. She was broke. So she would work all week. And then the next day she's broke. Hmm. But she finally, I just talked to my mom. She finally quit last week, man. Oh, wow. It made me cry. Like, for oh, wow. real. Like, mm-hmm. since I was like four or five years old. I'm 42 years old. She, she finally quit. She don't wow. drink alcohol and nothing no more. Wow. I'm happy yeah. to hear that. Bruh, like, me too. Because mm-hmm. she worked. My mom, like, she been through a lot. Mm-hmm. And I spent most of my life making excuses for her mm-hmm. because there was no dude. So mm-hmm. when I failed, mm-hmm. I feel like I failed her. Mm-hmm. You know, because, like, mm-hmm. I feel like she depended on me mm-hmm. to help her and my sister. So mm-hmm. did you feel like... Um, I mean, you didn't grow up with your dad in, in the house, so you felt like you had to be the man to be able to change that family dynamic? Well, I, I kind of was forced to become a man because sometimes my mom, like, she's drunk and hungover, mm-hmm. and she don't wake up. So I had to get my sisters ready for school. So, I, you know, I put a ponytail in their hair, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, cook them food, a pancake. That's all I know how to cook, <laughs> <laughs> a pancake. And then I make sure they get on the bus. And then I went to school. Mm. So... Wow. I think the older I got, I got tired of kids, man. Because I was like, shoot, like, I've been doing this since I was little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so how did you take yourself from that environment at 16 years old to even go further? Because I know you, you ended up being a footballer. Yeah. Uh, so walk me through that process from 16 years living with your mom in their, in their projects to moving to your new place. F- from that point, what happened next? Oh, I didn't leave my mom till, uh I finished uh, high school. Y'all call it senior high school. Senior here. We, we high just school. call it high school. Yeah. So where we grew up at, like, usually the only way out for us was sports. Mm. Nobody pushed, hey, become a doctor or a police mm. officer or a lawyer, you know, because we, we don't even like police mm-hmm. growing up. So we played football, basketball, track. So that was our ticket to college. And I started playing football when I got to high school because to play it younger, you had to pay for it. Mm. We didn't have no money. Mm. My friends that had moms and dads, you know, that wasn't on drugs and stuff, they can afford it. We couldn't. Mm. So I had to wait till I got to high school. It was free. And then mm. I got to high school, and these coaches were like, who is this? Because I was just always naturally talented. Because my mom and dad was, like, naturally athletically talented. Mm. They was like, hey, come, come over here. So I started playing. I don't, you don't know much about American football, but I played defensive line. Mm-hmm. And I was skinny. Mm-hmm. Like him, like super skinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then that's ninth and tenth grade. So mm-hmm. varsity is my junior year. I didn't know what position to play because they said we're gonna put you a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You know who Terrell Owens is, Randy Moss. You know no, who? No. Okay, what well, they they play wide receiver. You know the quarterback throws it and you catch it. Mm-hmm. Usually those are receivers. So mm-hmm. um, I try try to play receiver. And after five games, I end up starting. Mm-hmm. And then after my junior year, I ran track, mm-hmm. summer track. Mm-hmm. So. 
during that summer, every school was offering me track scholarships because I did long jump. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, Colgate, Yale, Dartmouth, Princeton, Harvard. I was like, I don't have no grades to get in these schools. Mm -hmm. They Ivy League really schools. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I got, I got my grades up, and then all these schools started coming for football. The fifth game of the season, the Navy come. Mm -hmm. Navy Academy, they offered me a full scholarship in track. Mm -hmm. I said no. I should have took it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have much guidance back then. So I used, to, I used to fight all the time. So I lost a lot of scholarships, and I had two schools. Mm -hmm. I took the first one that came. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's how I got to college. And every college I went to, because I kept transferring, because I didn't want to be there, mm -hmm. my coach was like, you don't belong here. Like, you're too good. Because mm -hmm. I was at Division Two, mm -hmm. And then I ended up transferred to Division I. But... Mm -hmm. That's why my son, he's 18. He plays in the University of Northern Iowa. Really? He's super talented, yeah. So you had your son, how old were you? 20, I was 25. I was with his mom. Well, it was, it was my senior year. So I was with his mom, and she was done. She, uh, she's a social worker. She still works for the state of uh, New Jersey. So uh, she's Jamaican. And we ended up breaking up before he turned two. She been, she's been married like 14 years now. She's still married. So. Wow, so let's walk me through this process a little bit. You, you finished, you became a footballer. Mm -hmm. At what point did you decide to, to kind of um, step out of that? To, to stop football? Yeah. Uh, for good, it was 2017, and I tried it again in 2022 because one of my old teammates from 2012, he became a head coach on one of these indoor football teams, and uh, he needed some help at receiver, so. And I think when I was there, when Dell was interviewed, Mm -hmm. And you said something about being in jail for some time? Yeah, 28 months. 28 months? Yeah, and, and yeah, it's, it, it stopped a lot because I was like in the prime. I, I went, well, I just turned 20, 26. Yeah, just turned 26. Yeah, 26. Mm -hmm. And when I got out, I was 28. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to get out. Wow. I didn't know what to do no more. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. I didn't have a car. I didn't have no clothes. I didn't have nothing. So I had to pretty much start all over, so. So for people watching who are probably minus have seen that last video. Mm -hmm. Can you give them a, a little um, context on that story and how you got to jail? Oh, so I was messing with a, a girl. Mm -hmm. She still lives in Baltimore. <laughs> she has four kids now. So uh, when I met her, she had one kid. His name was Cameron. He was three. He's like 21 now. Mm -hmm. And uh, like she's the boost. He might know what boosting is, but he basically she, Get a bag, go in the store, fill it up with stuff. This was before they stopped putting the little tags on it with the mm -hmm. little barcodes, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, alarm go off. So she just steal stuff and then got into like taking people credit cards. Mm -hmm. So you just get credit card number and stuff. So that's how we got caught. Well, wow. I, I got caught. So you were doing that with her? Yeah, I was doing it with her and then. Um, how come both of you didn't get caught? Because at that point, I didn't have no kids and. She was a single mom. Like, mm -hmm. she had a baby by some other dude. And that's how I am, man. Like, I didn't, I didn't want no lady going to jail. Who going to take care of her kid? Mm. So. Oh, wow. So you sacrificed yourself. Yeah. I do, I've done it a lot. Just being stupid. I never should If I mm -hmm. had to do it over, mm -hmm. her ass would have went to jail. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because it, 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 it ruined a lot in my life. Like, I really think I was supposed to be a Hall of Famer in the NFL. Mm. Like, I had that much talent. There are still people in the NFL in the um, executive like, office, they, they know who I am. They mm. would tell you. They mm. said uh, Jay Sonis has Hall of Fame talent, but I never think he'll make it unless he got right with God. Mm. I was running. Wow. Because know, you, you know when you do it wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You feel it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't care. Mm. So I ran. And I, like, I, I swear God was pulling me, and I just kept running. Mm. And he just, <laughs> he just kept following me. Mm. And I ended up in jail. And that's when... I started getting more into the Bible because I never understood it. You know, I Tao and D and like, bro, I don't know what this stuff talking about. And then this guy who was like, his name was Sean. He was never child support. So he wasn't going to prison. Now, this was like city jail before you go to prison. And he was always reading me the Bible. I'm like, bro, I don't understand that. So he just kept reading it. And then when I finally went to prison, I prayed one day. My, my cell buddy went out to the rec yard. So I was praying. I said, God, can you help me understand this? Because I have no idea. Mm -hmm. No lie, bro. He took me to the book of Acts. And that's what Saul, the Paul conversion. You know, Christians love Paul. Mm -hmm. They talk about Paul more than they talk about Christ. Mm -hmm. So from then on, man, I started understand, understanding the Bible more and more. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> what year was that? Oh, uh, That was 2000. 
at this point, it was 2008, Eight. mid 2008. Okay. Yeah. But when I got really, really into it was after I got circumcised in 2014. Mm. Mm. So you were in jail 2008? Yeah. How long did you say? 28 months? Yeah, so I got locked up June 16, 2007, and then I got out like August or September 2009. So what did you do after coming out of jail? Even though you said you didn't want to come so, out, you didn't know what well, to do. Well, I had to. They gave, they gave you $50, and they said, good luck, we'll see you in a year. Because mm. the recidivism, like people who go to prison, about 80 to 90% are back within a year. I said, y'all won't see me no more. Mm. Bro, I ain't never been in trouble before. Like, mm. like jail-wise, I mean, school fighting and stuff, but... I was like, y'all gonna see me? They ain't seen me since, hmm. you know? <laughs> so um, I went to New Jersey and I stayed with my friend. Her name is Shaquana. She's married now, but I didn't have nowhere to stay. So she let me stay with her. And then I started sending out my old, like, highlight films. I sent it to Wyoming and Coach Magic, Dan Mache Shock. He called me. He was like, hey, we'd love to have you. So he paid for my, paint, uh, paid for my plane ticket. And I flew up to Wyoming on February 28th, 2009. No, 2010. Mm -hmm. And I've been out there, uh, wow. Wyoming, mm -hmm. Colorado, that area. So you were since. playing football from 2010 till what? Uh, 2017. 2017. I played before I went too. Mm -hmm. uh, I was playing arena football in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. North Carolina, mm -hmm. and then I worked out for the Packers, the Green Bay Packers twice, mm -hmm. the um, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Miami Dolphins, and the Buffalo Bills. Wow. And then a week after I was locked up, the Packers wanted to bring me back in, mm -hmm. but I was locked up. For what? They wanted to sign me. But you were already locked up. I was, in, I was in jail at that point because I worked out oh, for okay. them earlier that year. Okay, okay. And, you know, because sometimes people get hurt. Mm -hmm. and but if you, I mean, from what we know on TV that most black people want to be athletes because they know there's money come out, coming out of that, right? But you were still an athlete, but you, you still had to go to the, the shopping mall thing with your... Yeah, that won't no money. Like, $1,700. Mm-hmm. What's that? Uh, less than 2,000 CDs? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, less than 20,000. 20, yeah. yeah. So that's all I went to jail for, less than 20,000 CDs. But you were still a footballer at that time. Yeah, but yeah. Um, the season was over. Mm -hmm. Because, like, when you play arena football, mm -hmm. it's just for that season, and mm -hmm. it's usually four months. Mm -hmm. And the next season, they're only one-year contracts. You got to mm -hmm. find another team, so. Mm -hmm. So playing football, how many years do you play in your whole career? About 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. I don't know if you want to put it out there, but how much money do you think you made collectively over the year playing football? Maybe a half a million dollars? Half a million dollars? That ain't nothing, though. Yeah? No. In 10 years? No, that ain't nothing. Hmm. I mean, that's just during the season. I still worked in the off-season. Because, like, we so had to, were working no more. Yeah, we had to find jobs. So I, st I was working the oil field still. Wow. Yeah, Tell so, me about it. So I first started doing um, fracking. It's fracking because, mm -hmm. you know, drilling rigs, they drill straight down. You know, mm -hmm. they crack the, the shell rock to get the gas. But fracking, fracking, go, it can go horizontal. It can go, like, straight. Up. And uh, it basically it's a different way to get the gas. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did that. Basically, all you do is, like, you have a, a bunch of different pump trucks, and you hook the pipe up to a missile. Mm -hmm. The missile is like the, the computer. Mm -hmm. And the missile pump everything down into the ground, you know, because it mix all these fluids. You might be running the sand, mm -hmm. he might be running the chemicals, mm -hmm. and whatever else. And it all mixed and it goes in the ground. Mm. So and you were doing a hard labor thing? Yeah, it's hard. Wow. Yeah, and it's... How, how, how long did you do that for? Uh, fracking, about four years, and then I got into cement. Cement? In the oil field. What is that? That's, remember I said the drilling rig? Yeah. So we work hand-in-hand -hand with the drilling rig. Mm -hmm. Once they drill the holes, they need us to come in and seal the holes in the ground. Mm -hmm. So we pump cement in the ground, you know, through their, uh, like, um, wellhead or whatever, mm -hmm. and it cements the, um, the, so that the gas won't escape, because mm -hmm. stuff can blow up. Oh, wow. That was, it was easier doing cement, but you work more hours, mm -hmm. 130, 140 hours a week. Keep in mind, it's only like 164 hours in a week. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll drive to the location. What, what year was this? Just, <laughs> just last year. Oh, really? I, was, I was still doing it. That's the job I left to come here. Really? How much were you making? Uh, Bro, I made, like, March, just March of last March, I made $20,000 in March. Yeah. So I was making between $3,000 and $5,000 a week. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you're not going to work the same amount of hours every day, wow. but I was guaranteed to get at least $3,500 mm. every so week. What, what triggered you doing this job to be able to leave it behind? It was fat. Well, why did I do the job or why did I leave it? 
leave it? Oh, because I knew I wanted to come here and I needed the money. Oh, okay. So, you know, some people sell drugs with fast money, mm -hmm. but you can go to jail for that, mm -hmm. you know? So I just rather do this. It's fast money, but it's hard. It's like, hard. There's and no, it's dangerous? Yeah, it's dangerous. There, there's no family time. Mm -hmm. Like, if you got a girlfriend and you ain't got no time for her, because mm -hmm. it's all rotation. Mm -hmm. It was 15 days on, and then you get six off. Mm -hmm. I didn't take the six off. Mm -hmm. I stayed. Wow. So you get extra money. Yeah. And you did that for four years. No, I did that for two years. Two years. I did the fracking for four. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What, and then what, there has to be an epiphany moment for you where Africa came into the picture. You said a little bit about it. It was when I got here. Really? Yeah. So how did you find out about that tall thing? Bro, I don't, bro, it popped up on Facebook out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it was like the God Box tour. I'm like, I saw the word God. That's what got yeah. me. And then I was like, so I started looking at it. I clicked on it and I opened the link and it had different destinations. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, snap, Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And why Ghana, though? Because it's, it's very... Bro, I don't know. Like, it was like the colors and then a little star is what got me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I'm picking Ghana. Mm. Because wow. I didn't want to go to Senegal. I got a friend. Mm -hmm. She's married. She lives in New York. Mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, she was like, you should go to Senegal. But I said, I said no, I'm going to try Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they told brought you last year. The tour bought me in 2021. 2021. Yeah. I, I, came, I came with Hebrews. Mm. Like, it was like 50 or 60 of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, so it was a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. I got bored. So me... And three other people, we left the tour and did our own thing. And then oh, we wow. met them back in the airport 16 days later. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you went to the U.S. And how many months did you decide to come back? Oh, once I, I thought it was after 16 days here, man, when I went back, uh, I was like, I had a girlfriend at the time. I was like, I'm moving. I'm mm -hmm. going to Africa. So I know you're not, she white. Uh, I said, like, I know you're not going to go. Like, she don't care about Africa. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, her life is in America. Yeah. And she said, like, out of all these years of me knowing you, because I met her in Colorado, but we was living in Houston. Mm -hmm. She said, I never seen you this serious about nothing. Mm -hmm. And I stayed on it, and I stayed on it, and I stayed on it, and we ended up breaking up. And then I just worked harder and harder. And, like, I never went you home. You broke up with her because she didn't want to come to Africa. No, it wasn't you. that. It, we was just, like, going the opposite directions. Because, like, mm -hmm. like, she's a Christian, mm -hmm. and, like, she... I don't celebrate Christmas. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't celebrate nothing. Mm -hmm. Like Valentine's Day, you know, I get nothing from me because that's pagan. It came from the Romans started that. The same people who killed Christ. Uh, <laughs> so I don't, I don't celebrate nothing. Mm. So it was, you know, when, yeah. it's, you know, because white people, they love their tradition. Yeah. Like, and it, it's hard, man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to celebrate it. And then she said, But why did you decide to, to choose a white person to date? Because I was living in Colorado and Wyoming. That's all out there. Oh. Yeah. I never had a white girl until I moved out there. Like, at all. Really? Yeah. And it kind of makes you addicted to them. It is, because they give you money and stuff. Like, you'd be like, hey, can, can I borrow $1,000? She, she gave it to me. Really? Bro, yeah. Then you go to, like, black girls ain't giving you in where it get out my face. So I'm wow. like, man, like these white girls, they don't stress us like y'all stress us and they don't put us down like y'all put us down. Like they got your back. Their families be having your back. Yeah. I'll be like, this is crazy. Why don't black people have black people back like that? Wow. Why do you think white girls treated you better than black girls? Um, because black men only make up 6% of the U.S. population. It's not a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they like how we move, how we look, you know, um, just how we act. Because, mm -hmm. you know, white dudes, they're a little square. You know, they, yeah. they stuck up. They, they, I got white friends. They just, like, so dull. Like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. You, know, you know, white girls, like, you guys are cool. How long did you guys date it for? Me and her? Yeah. Shit, off and on for, like, nine years. What? Yeah. Wow. That's, like, that's my buddy. Like, bro, I, people think I'm racist. I don't really care for white people. Mm -hmm. But if she needed my help, mm -hmm. I would still help her to this day. Because, like, she done a lot for me. Mm. When nobody, like, she, she was all I had when I didn't have nobody. Mm. Yep. Mm. And you were saying your, your black community didn't treat you the same way your white friends and, and girlfriend treated you. Well, well, most of my black girlfriends have been, like, kind of, like, conservative. Because mm -hmm. I don't like hood girls. Mm -hmm. They are like men. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... A lot of my girlfriends, they are more conservative, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they probably talk like white girls, but they don't. It's just proper. They talk mm -hmm. proper. Mm -hmm. um, so wow. most of my girl, I, I never had like, like no ghetto mm -hmm. girl. I don't like no type of girls mm -hmm. Interesting. At, at all. Well, then let me ask you this. Moving back to the point where you left America behind, mm -hmm. 
how did your friends and family react to you moving to the continent and leaving your, your job behind? You they, were, see, my, my mom, <laughs> she already said, she said, because I moved back to Virginia, and she said, I know you're not going to be here long. You never stay nowhere long. Mm. I said, yeah, I'm going to Africa. She said, you taking me with you? I said, you ain't going nowhere. She never, she never been on the airplane. Mm. So uh, she said, uh, okay, I, I know you're leaving, so I'll see you if you decide to come back. My friends don't care. They just, I'm always over the place. I'm a nomad, man. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm always on the go. Mm -hmm. Once I found out, found out about this, I was like, I wish I knew about Africa 10, 15 years ago. Really? Bro, I'd be a millionaire over here. Really? A multi-millionaire. Really? What makes you feel like that? Because, like, man, all these opportunities here, mm -hmm. like, y'all want to leave. Mm -hmm. But y'all, like, there are so many avenues to make money here that mm -hmm. you can't do in the West. Mm -hmm. Let's the, talk about it. Because the West, like, everything's a, st a structure. Mm -hmm. Like, you only get but so high. Like, I got a friend I met at the gym. Mm -hmm. He's a flight attendant. He mm -hmm. met his wife in Ethiopia. She's Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. And, uh, bro, he started his own pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. and he already got, like, three or four contracts. I met him in Houston, in mm -hmm. Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. you, not, you couldn't start your own ph pharmaceutical company in America mm -hmm. because of Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. You ain't doing that. It's certain stuff you just can't do. Like, it's, black people can't poultry farm in America. They're not giving you no... Really? No, they, no. Why? Like, black farmers suffer a lot. The government don't like helping black people. Mm. They, they, they never like help. They, they didn't even count us as a human being. We was three-fifths of a human being. That's the equivalent of a cow. Mm. We eat cows. Mm. We was property. Mm -hmm. So they never wanted to help us. Mm -hmm. So they, they give you a little bit for your vote. Because most of us vote Democrat. Like idiots. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even vote no more because, you know, they... Yeah, <laughs> same people. Wow. Yeah. So, so let's talk about the culture shock and what you you found on the continent that makes you feel like you've missed out a lot and you wish you knew about Africa or Ghana. Well, first off, I felt like a human for the first time because mm. in America you always gonna be African American, you always gonna be white, Asian, Puerto Rican, Mexican, whatever, you know. And me growing up, I was darker than a lot of my friends, so they always called me porch monkey, African booty scratcher. Uh, they used to call me Manukbo. Man Manukbo is from the S Sudan because mm -hmm. my nickname is Nuke. Mm -hmm. And then my eyes is kind of yellow, you know, like. So they, they always made fun of me. So light-skinned girls didn't like me. So when I was growing up, I only liked super dark girls because they was treated the same way as I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it probably felt like slavery being dark-skinned when I was growing up. Mm. It was bad. So when I got here, I looked just like everybody. And sometimes I get offended because no, nobody even recognized me. Because, mm. <laughs> you know, I look like everybody else. You mm. know, when well, my tattoos and stuff covered up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just felt I can finally just be a human for once. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Was that deep for you? Was it a, a very deep feeling? Yeah, bro. It, it, was, it was deep and it was peaceful. Like, and then I saw all the, the family structure here. Like, the tradition, how, how women carry themselves. Like, a lot of women here, they don't, they don't talk back to men. You know, they don't, uh, girls get up here. When they get up, they sweeping the ground outside. They sweeping their room. I'm like, why in the hell y'all, like, you got to make a woman in America clean up. They're going to be mad at me for saying that because not all of them like that. Mm -hmm. Just the ones that I've been around mm -hmm. and I've been to 48 states. They don't want to clean? When they want to. When they want to. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's natural here. They wake up in the morning. The first thing they do, they washing dishes or they sweeping or they do it before they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. America be like, oh, I get to it this weekend. Like, no, but you, you dated a white girl. Was she clean? Oh, she was super clean. She, she was, she's actually OCD. Mm, yeah. What is OCD? Um, I don't know the acronyms for it, but it just, it's a, yeah. So she's like a clean freak. Bro, super clean. Like, I, bro, I can't leave nothing nowhere. Mm. Like, you, a, a grain of salt, she'd be like, you need to clean that. I'm like, a piece of salt. <laughs> bro, it was so bad. You know how guys when you take your clothes off you just take your you probably got your, your boxes still in your shorts and you throw them in dirty clothes yeah, yeah. she said no you need to take your boxes outside your i'm like what <laughs> like, they'll come out in the washing machine like wow. wow so you see all those things here down the continent made you feel like you're more home i just i, I feel home here like even where I live in, out in Boardy Man, like the building structure and the clothes lines outside, mm -hmm. it remind me of the projects I grew up in. Really? Like a lot of stuff, man, when I see it. I the projects like, by the peaceful projects. <laughs> it, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it's peaceful, but I'm just saying like, yeah. like the people outside hanging their clothes, mm -hmm. the little kids playing like soccer and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody is so nice. Like 
Sometimes I don't want to talk to nobody, but you have to talk. Mm -hmm. Good evening. I'd be like, good evening. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Like, I don't want to talk, but I can't have that attitude because these people, yeah. they're like, so freaking nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people in America, we walk past each other, won't say nothing. Yeah. Like, you bump, and then you bro, like, inward, like, you need to watch where you're going. Mm -hmm. Here, like, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. it's, there, there's no like. Wow. It's crazy, man. You prefer that? You like that? Instant? I like peace. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. You know, Mr. Miyagi said, like, fights are not good. Somebody always get hurt. Yeah. So I, I prefer peace, but I fight. I don't yeah. want to because once I, once I get in I'm crazy, you know, yeah. so I don't like to do that. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about that here. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. crazy drivers, you know. Mm -hmm. just be, I don't even know what they be saying. I just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So let me, let me, I think you might have um, been through some challenges. It's, it's all, it's fun, it's amazing, but what has been some challenges you, you've been through so far, being on a course? I feel like people be trying to use me too much. What do you mean by that? Because, uh, like, I let some people borrow money, mm. and they ask to borrow. I know they don't give it back because their salary ain't even that much, you know? So, uh, and then they see me again. They just think I'm like an ATM. Then I get mad, you know, because mm. I'm like, hey, you work for this job and you get X amount of dollars per month. I'll let you borrow what you make in a month. And be grateful. Why are you still asking me for money? Because mm. they think, like, oh, I can use him. He's super nice. Mm -hmm. Bro, I go to stores sometimes, the same store in my neighborhood. I see this lady and her niece all the time. She just charged me 199 CDs for two packs of sausage, three packs of Oreos, a small Coke and a loaf of bread. I ain't even say nothing. Because mm. I, I, knew, I knew that wasn't the price. Mm. She cheated you. Yeah, she cheated. But I, I, you know, I, said, I said, you know what? So were like people hiking up uh, prices and asking for money? Yeah, it just, mm. it's irritating. Mm. I'm like, do it to the white people. Don't do it to us. I'm like, we, we, <laughs> we suffer just like, not as bad as y'all, but like, <laughs> like if you lived in America, bro, like you would make money, but you still going to suffer. Mm -hmm. Like mm. it's... Like, y'all have it. Like, y'all literally do anything y'all want here. Y'all mm. peace out the street. Mm. You ain't peace out no street let's, in America. Let's talk about the struggles our brothers are going through in the diaspora, mm -hmm. even in the neighborhoods. What are some of the most craziest things you've ever had a brother go through or, you know, some? I ain't even got to hear it. I, bro, I see it, like, not having food, mm -hmm. not having nowhere to live, uh, not having family. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of guys join gangs, mm -hmm. because it's a family structure. And then... When you love somebody, you usually would do anything for that person, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why you got gangs killing gangs because they really love the dudes that they fall under. Mm -hmm. But it's stupid though because you're literally killing your own people. Mm -hmm. It's red against blue. Mm -hmm. Dumb. Mm -hmm. I, I think I saw something on the TV or someone said it that there was two drivers driving and one cut one another mm -hmm. and then he just jumped out of his car and just shoot the other yeah. guy. Because he come, is that true? It, bro, it happens a lot, but it's it's pride, mm. and it's about respect. Mm -hmm. Like men, we just want respect. You know, women they want love. We want respect, mm -hmm. and some men will really die behind their respect. Mm. Like you know, when a girl yell at you, like the first thing, I'm like, I'm like, who the hell you think you're talking to? Because mm. that's respect, you know. So you get you get these guys, they all pumped up. You know, someone probably high when drinking. And now somebody disrespect me, now I got to kill him. Mm. Now he dead, you're going to prison, so you both lose. Mm. So, wow. But it's the upbringing, man. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. But even though you were out in that community, you, grew, you left it. You were able to leave that behind. Yeah. Why do you think other brothers in the community is not able to leave it behind? Because everybody didn't take their education as serious as I did. Mm. Or some people, they were not that smart. Or some people got caught up in the streets early. Mm. My mom... Kick my ass. Like she, like, she ain't playing that. You know, so even though she had her own issues, she was still pretty strict. She made sure we did what we supposed to do. That's amazing. So, and then, plus, I told you, my friends who did that stuff, they wasn't letting me do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they didn't want to do it. But they, they felt like that's the only thing they could do. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I, my grandma, before she died, she died when I was in, like, the eighth grade. She was 40-something, but she was really strict. And I was scared of my granddaddy. So <laughs> I was getting in trouble in school, man. Mm -hmm. So back then, they can beat you in school with a, with a paddle. Yeah. So I get beat. They take you to the bathroom, pull you up, and get you a couple of smacks on your butt. Mm -hmm. Then they call home and tell your mom. Mm -hmm. Your mom beat you. Then my mom tell her daddy. He, I get three beatings in one day. <laughs> so, like, you know, I was scared. Yeah. 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 So, bro, I grew up scary. Like, I was scared to do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Except for fight. I would fight. Mm -hmm. But other stuff, like, I was scared because I knew my mom and granddad was going to get me. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, now, I mean, looking at your story, I know people watching this video might be, some people might be where you are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, back in the days when you were growing up, growing up in the projects. Mm -hmm. If you have three best advice for people watching you, what would that advice be if they want to take themselves out of that project and, you know, set their life on a different path? It, it's, it, it has to be education. Mm. Like, because education, it helps lift a lot of people out of poverty. Mm. I mean, you're not going to go become like this multi-millionaire in America. It's, it's a few, you know. Um, but I, I say um, education, mm -hmm. keep God first, and like listen to your parents. Mm. Kids don't listen to their parents no more. They, uh, they disrespect their parents like crazy. My generation, I think we're the last generation to actually respect our parents in America. Now you got kids telling their parents what to do. Uh, so society has gone backwards. The kids mm -hmm. are running stuff now. Mm -hmm. That's why you see all these kids doing crazy stuff on TikTok and people dropping out of school. And mm -hmm. I just, right, it was, for me, it was school mm -hmm. and I was scared of my mom and granddaddy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they was disciplinarians. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even though my mom struggled with what she struggled with, we still had structure, mm -hmm. you know. What was some of the stereotype you, you heard about Africa before coming here? It, I mean, apart from the... the it, was, it was poor, mm -hmm. it's dirty, it's dangerous. Um, uh, yeah, uh, they scam artists. Is that still stopping some people from the black community from coming here? You Bro, think a, lot, so? a lot of people still don't know nothing about Africa. Mm. They don't know that they actually will have a better life here than over there. Mm. Yeah, because like, right, that's, there's no limitations of what you can do here. Mm. Like, have, none. You, have you tried to invite your friends or your mom to come down here? Um, my mom is literally scared. I, I think she would die if she got on the airplane. Like, really? she, she probably had a heart attack. But she ain't getting on the airplane. Why? My mom was born in 1963, right? She just like, <laughs> my grandma never had a driver's license. My grandma never drove. Mm. She ain't going to do it. My sisters will do it. Mm -hmm. One of them. The mm -hmm. other one. Never been on the plane either. She's really? terrified. So, so you were alone here in, in Ghana? Bro, you ain't never alone in Ghana. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you ain't never alone. Yeah. So um, how, do you, how do you sustain your life being here in Ghana? Uh, I, I save some money, and I still get paid from one of my jobs mm -hmm. until it stops. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. save it because I'm, I'm trying to get in portrait from. I got two friends from America, one mm -hmm. white. Mm -hmm. He owns a few car washes, and one of my other friends in New York, mm -hmm. we all come together, and we because I already got the land, mm -hmm. and we're going to do poultry farming. Oh, that, well, that's amazing. Yeah. I know wow. two dudes who make 11000 USD a month. Really? Yeah, they got like three, 4000 birds. Here in Ghana? Yeah, layers. Oh, wow. The, the stuff y'all don't want to do, yeah. I want to do it. I, I've been looking up well, poultry farming about since 2000. How, how, much, how much is an initial investment um, invest, uh, amount that I can invest to, to get that? For you? Yeah, if I want to do it. It, it depends on like how we split it because yeah. I was going to do it by myself but I didn't want to no, pay no, I, if I want to do it by myself it depends on how many birds you want to start with okay I have an acre of land and the budget is open I want to make $11,000 a month you what probably, probably going to need about 4,000 birds 4,000 birds yeah, yeah. But, but it, it costs a lot because the first six months mm -hmm. you're not going to make no money okay. because they don't lay eggs until about what, 16 weeks so once they start laying eggs mm -hmm. They lay an egg every day. So you get 4,000 eggs mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. And that's money, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So is this the eggs that you're selling to make 11,000 or the, the person that you said is making or the Oh, the, the, yeah, the, the money, the 11,000 is two, is two friends that they make. Mm -hmm. It's fr just from the eggs. From but the you eggs. spend a lot of money for the feed. Mm -hmm. for the, if you don't know how to make feed using maize and all that stuff, yeah. you got to buy it. Wow. And that's a lot of money. It's about six thousand dollars, six, seven thousand dollars before you even start making money. Mm. So you're gonna lose before you make. That's why I got two other people. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I mean that's some of the opportunities you've identified here. Is there any other opportunities you've identified that you think people watching this video should come and invest in? They probably should get into real estate. Real estate. Yeah, like it's good, but I also hate it because mm. a cry has been gentrified right before our eyes. I, I read one article about a guy. He has a wife and two kids, mm -hmm. and they kept jacking up the rent. He couldn't afford it no more with his salary, and he couldn't pay his uh, kids' school fees, so they moved to Caswell. And people talk trash about Caswell. I said, you keep on about two years, you're going to be in Caswell, mm -hmm. because you're not going to be able to afford to cry no more. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then as soon as the airport opened in um, Kumasi, mm -hmm. Kamasa will end up just like this. <laughs> yeah. gonna, it, it, it happened in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Colorado used to be cheap. They priced people out. 
That's what, yeah, for real. All these rich people come in, they can buy this stuff. And then they kick the locals out. Wow. That's where you see Ghana going? Oh, uh, Accra? it's Accra? Accra is definitely, it's definitely going to happen. Because mm-hmm. my house that I was building, it's in the Wutu Senya, mm-hmm. right at Jai River. Mm-hmm. I went there about two weeks ago, me and my friends, because he had to make a hole on, on the roof for the rain. And, like, mm-hmm. cause, and um, bro, they was building like roads and the drainage. I was surprised. I was like, way back here? Mm-hmm. They development, but it's coming. Mm-hmm. People won't get kicked out of Accra. <laughs> well, what would you tell people in the diaspora as an advice? Shoot, uh, c- hey, come here, mm-hmm. invest, just leave America, man. Like, take your 401k, whatever you got now. Mm-hmm. If you got a house, sell it. You know, mm-hmm. sell it, come here, and you can make two, three times what you was making over there. Like, Alita, is, you know, mm-hmm. Alita is out there. Yeah. She makes a lot of money. She came here with $3,000. Mm-hmm. She used to work at Walmart. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She's doing great. So mm-hmm. many, they don't even have to pick Ghana, bro. They can pick many different countries. They can go to Kenya, Uganda. They can go to Nambia. Nambia only has like two, three million people in the whole country. Mm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But <laughs> yeah. you, you mentioned Anita. What, what did she do differently to be able to take herself from that and making the How much is he making now? Who, her? Yeah. Bro, if I was a guest, she'd probably make over $100,000 a year. Really? I, I, I just by watching her videos mm-hmm. and all the clients that she has mm-hmm. and the way that she's building for the dives, mm-hmm. yes. From Walmart to making hundred thousand dollars. Bro, I think she's for a year. I think she's at least she's close to a hundred thousand. Mm. She probably she would never tell us, but yeah, I think she's somewhere around there. She's but doing good. You know, people watching this video might not believe that you can actually go to their continent and be pros- uh, prosperous. Yes, you can. It's just people from here that tell other people that you can't. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like most of the Africans that I know in America. They come from rich families. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, most of them got money, you know, yeah. or the means to go over there. Mm-hmm. Like, just, like, poor black people, you got poor, like, Ghanaians, mm-hmm. they don't have the means mm-hmm. to go there. Mm-hmm. So but, I tell mm-hmm. there are ways that you can make money here. Mm-hmm. My, my advice to Ghanaians and Americans, black Americans that are not married, marry a Ghanaian. A black woman, African-American woman, marry a Ghanaian man. Ghanaian women, marry, marry an African-American man. Mm-hmm. We can put our resources together. Interesting. Because we need them in order to move around, you know, because mm-hmm. I don't get cheated when I'm with a, you know. You with a Ghanaian? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. One thing that I interviewed a couple, mm-hmm. um, they moved from Canada to Ghana. Yeah. And a guy and his wife, and her, her, her wife, his wife said he told her mom to move to the continent with, with her mm-hmm. because she was on retirement and she gets her retirement yeah. funds. And she's like, she would rather stay in Canada and be poor than to embark on a journey to Africa. People with that mindset, what would you tell them? Um, that's that colonial mindset. Because, like, we all have been conditioned to think Africa is this way and America is the greatest country. On. America is not the greatest. America don't lead the world in nothing. America ain't even the richest country in the world. Mm. It's, not, it's like number nine. Yeah, you have three Arab countries that has more money than America. Mm-hmm. Qatar, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Dubai, mm-hmm. they, they have more money than America. Singapore, I think Singapore, not Singapore, Switzerland, mm-hmm. one of those countries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Switzerland is the richest c- country in the nation right now. Mm. It ain't America. Mm-hmm. So, wow. and they only got rich because of us. Mm-hmm. They stole us from here mm-hmm. to build their wealth. We can take the wealth that we accumulated and bring it back here. We don't need them. Like, Africa don't need nobody. Mm. Africa has all the resources under, its, you know, under her feet. Mm. But I think me, Ghanaians are too nice. Mm. Like the government, they just let Australia get the mining out there in Cape Coast for the uranium. Mm-hmm. For what? Mm-hmm. It's a bad deal. Like they get 73% and Ghana gets like 17, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Cause you can train Ghanaians how to main, mine uranium mm-hmm. and they can make money mm-hmm. for their own country and keep the money in house. Mm-hmm. The Chinese keep money in house. Mm-hmm. The Lebanese keep money in house. Like the Arabs keep money in house. The white people keep money. Out. We don't do it. We spend our money with everybody else but ourselves. Interesting. Yeah. I, I see a lot of diasporas moving to the continent, but Ghanaians also wanting to go to America. Why do you think that is? Because it's what they see on TV mm. or social media. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'll show one of my friends, like, <laughs> all the, there are roads in America just like roads here. Mm-hmm. There are, like, shitty areas in America like we have shitty areas here. Like, mm-hmm. there are pretty... The, prettier places here than in America. Mm. But they don't know that because America has told them Africa is a shithole. When mm-hmm. we had Donald Trump as a president, mm-hmm. he called Africa a shithole. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these people think Africa is a shithole. Mm. No. 
Africa is way, way better than America. I like that. I like that. But it ain't even close. Really? It ain't even close. Interesting. Is, how many countries have you been on the continent? Is it Ghana your first? And that's it. Where Where else do you want to go to on the on, on the continent? I, I want to go. I want to go to Angola, Cameroon, and Guinea Bissau. Mm, the French speaking countries. Well, that's where most of my DNA come from. Mm, okay. Well, it's, it's Nigeria, but I ain't going to Nigeria. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not, bro? Nigeria rough. <laughs> uh, that's like being back in the hood. Like, no sir. <laughs> but what if it's a stereotype? You should go and find out. For oh no, <laughs> I, I got I got Nigerian friends here, bro. I got Nigerian friends in America. Yeah, and they look, you know. They're a little rough. They, they, they be scamming, though. Yeah. They be, they be scamming, but I ain't gonna, you know? Yeah. I like that. I like this. This is a wonderful conversation. Um, if, if you do have um, an advice in general for anybody watching who mm-hmm. want to embark on a journey whatsoever, what would the advice be? I'll just tell them, hey, you know, stop believing what other people uh, uh, tell you. Don't believe what you read because that's not your information. That, mm-hmm. That's your oppressor's information. Mm-hmm. Come see it for yourself. I guarantee you're going to like it. Mm. I cried when I left when I first came to 16. I didn't want to go back. Mm. I was like, I don't, I, I had like $20,000, like what, like on me, because mm-hmm. I brought all cash. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, I think I can make it here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to go, but I had to. Wow, you brought $20,000 cash. Yeah, I didn't know what I was going to do. I yeah. was going to try to buy a bunch of stuff. Wow. I was giving it away. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I give $100 here. 50, cause, like, I got, I got, I got a, when I see a woman yeah. and a kid, a baby on her back, mm-hmm. you feel bad. I just give it to her. I, bro, I went to the ATM one day because mm-hmm. I ain't had no CDs, mm-hmm. and it was a, you know the security guards they yeah. be, they be up there. So I said, hey y'all, come take a selfie with me. They, so I get all of them like two hundred CDs, just take a picture. Mm-hmm. So I still got the picture. You know, I do stuff like that because wow. mm-hmm. I get police money just sometimes. They don't ask for it because mm-hmm. I know they don't make that much. Mm-hmm. They do more than the military here. You know. True. Yeah. So the dude, police took my number. I'm not gonna say his name to get him in trouble. <laughs> he just texted me yesterday. He was like, "Hey man, it's um, Sergeant So and So. I really appreciate what you did for me." Mm. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Well, um, how much do you think is enough for someone to have to embark on a journey to Africa? Depending on what they want to do, how they live. If you want to live like you live in America, you gonna need a job. You know what I'm saying? Because the way I live here, I live the same way in America. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I don't party. Like, I'm pretty lame. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I go to the gym I, <laughs> and I play my PlayStation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and then do work online. But mm-hmm. other than that, like, when I came back, I came with cash. I had $10,000 cash. Mm-hmm. What you find moved? Well, I had money in the bank, but I still had, yeah. had $10,000 cash that I was going to just use to mm-hmm. see how long could I make it. Mm-hmm. I ain't even spent all that yet, and I've been here since November. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. If you come here and you, like, buy how locals buy and, like, cook your food, like, stuff go a long way. I know this lady, like, she stayed, she survives on, like, $15, American dollars a week. $15? $15, because she cooks and stuff. I'll be like, can you teach me how to do this? Wow. Yeah. But they be making it, man. I, I, I be tipping the boat drivers. Mm-hmm. But a dude took my number outside of the boat, and he called me, like, two days later. The dude was crying, because I gave him, like, a freaking 50 CD tip. Mm. The, the stuff we take for granted mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It means a lot to other people mm-hmm. And that's just how I am man. I always thank God Just I don't want to give people money sometimes And something say Give, give it to it. them mm. And I give it mm. And I don't I like that yeah. I like that Your story is very inspirational And I think people watching you Would learn a lot from your story And I appreciate you sharing with my audience No problem um, How do people reach out to you? How do people find you? Uh, well my um, YouTube is just my name, Jasonus Aronson, J A S O N U S A R R I N G T O N. My Instagram, <laughs> I changed my name again. Mm-hmm. It's my first name, Jasonus underscore athletics. Because mm-hmm. that's what I'm trying to get, like, start working with little kids. Because okay. it's so much talent here. Because mm-hmm. think about it the black people, Af- Af- African American, you see in America? Yeah. The LeBron James or the Michael Jordans, whatever. They came from Our here. DNA come from here. Mm-hmm. It, it, it ain't come from there. It came from here. Mm-hmm. So I took Joseph. I mean, Joseph, he plays soccer. Mm-hmm. I took him to the Matrix, and I had him doing burpees. He's like five. He's probably like your height. Mm-hmm. Bro, when he stood up and jumped, this dude's feet was this high off the ground. He mm-hmm. had no idea he can jump that high. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, if I get these kids younger, mm-hmm. train them how to play baseball, mm-hmm. basketball, mm-hmm. American football, and run track, mm-hmm. if they want to leave, 
it's a way for them to leave. They can get scholarships. Mm-hmm. These schools pay for it. Mm-hmm. And over there in high school, it's NIL. Kids are getting $200,000, dollars 300 in high school. Mm-hmm. They can send that money back and help their family. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm trying to help these little, yeah. you know, little kids. I like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been an amazing episode. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you like the video, share it to friends and family. Comment down below. Let's get the engagement going. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it, man. No problem. All right. <laughs>